Hi, my name is Lisa, and I'll be talking to you about the Henderson's Experience Curve model today. The learning curve. A learning curve is a graphical representation of the changing rate of learning for a given activity or tool. Typically, the increase in retention of information is sharpest after the initial attempts, and then gradually evens out, meaning that less and less new information is retained after each repetition. The learning curve can also represent, at a glance, the initial difficulty of learning something, and to an extent, how much there is to learn after initial familiarity. The learning curve and its effect. The experience of learning curves was first observed by 19th century German psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus. The rule used for representing the learning curve effect states that the more times a task has been performed, the less time will be required on each subsequent iteration. The learning curve theory states that as the quantity of items produced doubles, costs decrease at a predictable rate. The predictable rate is described by two equations. The first equation, y sub x is equal to kx log sub 2b. This equation describes the basis for what is called the unit curve. k stands for the number of direct hours to produce the first unit y sub x is the number of direct labor hours to produce the x unit. x is the unit number. b is the learning percentage. And here's the second equation. This equation describes the basis for the cumulative average or cumulative average curve. k is the number of direct labor hours to produce the first unit. y sub x is the average number of direct labor hours to produce the first x units x is the unit number, and b is the learning percentage. The experience curve is an idea developed by the Boston Consulting Group in the mid-1960s. Working with a leading manufacturer of semiconductors, the consultants noticed that the company's unit cost of manufacturing fell by about 25% for each doubling of the volume that it produced. This relationship they called the experience curve. The more experience a firm has in producing a particular product, the lower are its costs. Bruce Henderson, the founder of BCG, put it as follows. Costs characteristically decline by 20 to 30 percent in real terms each time accumulated experience doubles. This means that when inflation is factored out, costs should always decline. The decline is fast if growth is fast, and slow if growth is slow. The experience curve mathematically is described by a power law function sometimes to refer to as Henderson's law. Here's the equation. C sub 1 is the cost of the first unit of production. C sub n is the cost of the nth unit of production. n is the cumulative volume of production and A is the elasticity of cost with regarding to output. Okay, so here we attached an actual experience curve graph uh, just to show you what it physically looks like. And uh, on the horizontal axis, it shows the cumulative units of production, whereas on the vertical axis, it shows you the direct cost per unit. And um, an example here states that a curve that depicts a 15% cost reduction for every a doubling of output is called an 85% experience curve. This indicates that the unit cost dropped 85% of the original level. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about all the roles that apply when you are talking about the experience and learning curves. Uh, all of these include labor efficiency, standardization, specialization, methods improvements, technology-driven learning, better use of equipment, changes in the resource mix, product redesign, network building, and use cost reductions, and uh, shared experience effects. So first off, labor efficiency. Workers become more dexterous, they become more mentally confident, and spend less time hesitating, learning, or experimenting, or making mistakes. As uh, parts, uh, processes, and products become more standardized, efficiency tends to increase. When employees specialize in a limited set of tasks, they gain more experience with these tasks and operate at a faster rate. And uh, that's what standardization, specialization, and methods improvements is talking about. Going next, um, the product redesign. As manufacturers and consumers have more experience with their product, they can usually find improvements. 
This filters through the entire manufacturing process. Network building and use cost reductions. As a product enters more widespread use, the consumer uses it more efficiently because they're familiar with it. And as shared experience effects. Experience curve effects are reinforced when two or more products share a common activity or resource. Any efficiency learned from one product can be applied to other products. Technology-driven learning. Automated production technology and information technology can introduce efficiencies as they are implemented, and people can learn how to use them efficiently and more effectively. Better use of equipment. As total production has increased, manufacturing equipment will have been more fully exploited, which lowers the fully accounted unit costs. In addition, purchases of more productive equipment can be justifiable. Changes in the resource mix. As a company acquires experience, it can alter its mix of inputs and thereby become more efficient. Experience curve stops. The experience curve effect can sometimes come to an abrupt stop. This is caused by the following. Competitors introduce new products or processes that you must respond to. Key suppliers have much bigger customers that determine the price of products and services. Technological change requires that you or your suppliers change processes. The experience curve strategies must be reevaluated because they are leading to price wars or they are not producing a marketing mix that the market values. And this concludes our presentation of Henderson's experience curve model. I hope you've learned a lot. Thank you for watching.